Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. This is so important. Some of you will not make it if you don't get this information. You won't make it. When I say won't make it, life is predictable. For the first time last week, Tuesday, the British government used the word recession. Last week, Thursday, the American government used the word officially for the first time, recession. France was a little bit more honest. The French president used the word two weeks ago when they were meeting as the G7 group talking about the world situation the French president said, look, let's be honest, we are in recession. The average Bahamian knows nothing but that word. To recess means to stop and to draw back. When you use the word in, in terms of the economy, it means that the economy did exactly that. It stopped growing, and then it starts withdrawing, contracting. When an economy goes into recession, the next word you don't want to hear is the word depression. The last time the world had a depression was after World War II. They are now playing with the word this past week in the halls of power. The Bahamas has always been, <laughs> please forgive this word, lucky. I say luck because I still don't know how God blessed us to survive the 1930s depression. It was during that time when Castro decided that he would go the way of socialism. And it was only because of his decision that the Bahamas became an alternative destination for tourism. Because Cuba was the number one tourist destination before Castro became socialist. So our economy was built on another man's mistake. 90% of our jobs are built on tourism, including the money in the banks. So even our banking system depends on tourism because when you deposit your paycheck from taxis or from hotels or whatever work you do in the straw market, that goes into the bank. The bank has your money, which is really not money. It's just a piece of paper. We are very fragile. Recession means that the very foundations of the world system is collapsing. This is no time to be cute, and this is no time for cliches. Cliches means, bless the Lord, hallelujah, I'm fine. No, no, you better know some stuff now. Saying I'm blessed ain't gonna cut it. You have to experience blessing. The kingdom of God is real. It is a country. It's real. And it has all the components of a country, including an economy. The world's economies are imploding. Do you know what they say is the number one reason why the recession is 
exploding among the world's people because of another word fear fear is defined as please listen carefully it is defined as lack of confidence in other words when the consumers lose confidence in the system they stop participating in it they stop buying things consumer confidence is important for capitalist economies to work because everything in the world's economy is built on people buying and selling and if the people stop buying then you stop selling when you stop selling then you have inventory inventory is always costing and so there's fear at least to my third point very important the world is calling it a crisis everybody say crisis now I like the Japanese the Japanese are gonna be okay even though they sometimes take rash reactions to crisis but the Chinese word for crisis is the same word as opportunity so when you tell the Chinese things are in crisis they actually say it this way we have a big opportunity now that's why wherever the Chinese go even in the ghetto they end up with a business and you work for them what you call a problem they call opportunity so we don't panic kingdom people have to think differently when the world says fear we say faith when the world say crisis we say opportunity but you got to think differently that leads to point number four crisis is the source of creativity when there's innovation is usually a result of crisis humans have always advanced under pressure your parents told you years ago that necessity is the mother of invention what your mother meant by that is when you have to do something you find a way to do it if you lose your job somehow you know you're gonna eat somehow you're gonna find some way to feed them kids crisis is the incubator for innovation crisis is the womb for creativity now is the time to use the brain God gave you sitting around and hoping things change ain't gonna help you no more our governments are bankrupt of ideas of what to do do you know that the most powerful nations in the world the big five don't know what to do I just was in London a few hours ago and for two days I watched the pound drop from two dollars to 158 in a matter of days it's collapsing right in front of us they don't know what to do and mr. Brown the Prime Minister said we don't know what to do we are experimenting he says when the smartest don't know what to do you better hook up to someone who's smarter <laughs> write this down please the kingdom of heaven is never in crisis say amen, amen. say it loud amen. say it loud amen. I was talking to a pastor in England he said the church members are coming 30% have lost their jobs in the last two weeks and so our offerings are in trouble he says and we can't pay the weekly rent for the building we're having the service in he said what do I do I said you gotta have meetings with your members and start talking about creativity One pastor told me a few months ago when this thing hit, he said, I have to mortgage my house to save the church. And my wife has disagreed with it. I don't blame her. 
but he's trying to save the church building. This is real stories. In the kingdom of God, there is no crisis. God has never failed his people. But you got to make sure he, you are his people. Please keep your eyes open, please. This is a very serious morning. Because I'm telling you, in the next seven or eight days, this thing is going to come to a head. I think we need to remember that kingdom citizens grow in times of crisis. Everywhere, if you read history, whenever there was a problem, the kingdom citizens expanded. Persecution expands God's people. Just like heat expands yeast. And so this is the greatest time for us to capitalize on the opportunities but we got to learn some things first I want to give you this very very seriously the secret kingdom keys must come into play now please write this down this is very important I came with a message for you Jesus said the keys that will help you make it are secret keys secret keys that means what you learned ain't going to help you. There's some other information that he wants you to get. So you're going to overcome the world. The systems, think about it, everything they taught you in banking ain't working. Insurance company. The insurance companies are collapsing. The financial institutions that guarantee the insurance company are collapsing. The company that guarantee the bank's mortgage, that's collapsing. And the best graduates of Yale and Harvard don't know what to do. You better get some other information. Yes, sir. You know, I keep asking our local bankers, so what going to happen to our money? And they say, we, we can be all right. We can be all right. What do you mean we can be all right? If you depend on a monster, and the monster is sick, be honest with us. We need some other information. And my job as senior pastor is to don't give you some false, some strange idea that you're going to flow through this. I want you to be strong, but with secret knowledge. Let me tell you something. Jesus said something about crisis. Do you know that when they asked the Congress, please listen to me, look at me, look at me, please don't get distracted. When they asked the Congress four weeks ago, they called in the Federal Reserve leader, sat him down. They said, what caused this? What caused all the economy to crash? What caused all the banks to collapse? What caused this? And the guy used the word from the Bible. And everybody missed it in the church. He said the reason why the whole thing is collapsing is because of one word, greed. He used the word. He says because of greed. Am I right? You a banker, vice president? They said, in the system, the people in charge became greedy. Let me read something to you. Write this down. What is greed? Please write this down. Greed is the mismanagement of resources for personal benefit. All words are important. First, it is mismanagement of resources for personal benefit. That means you don't care who gets hurt in the process. You wonder why people are losing their homes by the thousands. 3,000 homes a week are being lost in America. A week. They estimate that by the end of 2009, they would have lost over 2 million homes. P 
people living in cars. Because a few people at the top became greedy. Let's read what the Bible says about greed. Mark chapter 7, words of Jesus. He says, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from the inside and make a man unclean. Greed is at the top of the list. Greed is when you want more than you need at the expense of everybody else. Greed means, I know I only need one pillow, but I want 10. I need one plate, but I want 20. That's greed. Mismanagement of resources. Ladies and gentlemen, I like what the apostle Paul said about greed as well. He said it's a curse. But look at Luke chapter 12. Jesus said, then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard. Interesting. Against all kinds of greed. He's talking to us. Notice he used the word watch out. Watch out means that it could happen to you. Don't even know you're greedy. Here you are. You got a car and a car working. But you see someone else with a nicer car and you don't need it now. But now you say, the Lord can bless me. No, you don't need the car. What do you mean the Lord can bless you? You're going into debt. You call it blessing, God calls it debt. The car you own was already paid for. But you see another car that another saint got, and you ain't know what they had to go through to get it, and you want it, and now that greed slipping into you, you call it blessing, God says it's a curse. Look at the words he used. He says, watch out. Be on your guard. You know, that's a hard thing to do. Some of you women, and please don't take that in personal today. I'm, I'm talking to you from, a, from the spirit of, of correctness. Some of the things you're going after you don't need. Wear them shoes a little bit longer. This ain't no time for you to talk about you staying with no style. I'm, I'm just as serious now. See, when you come under crisis, you need to be careful. Guard yourself, it says. Watch out for greed. Greed will destroy a whole country. Look at the next words. A man's life does not consist, Jesus says, in the abundance of his possession. He came right home to the point. He says, look, greed is when you want everything you see and you don't need it. I will never forget the day I went to visit the late John Templeton in Lightfoot Key in the Bahamas, a beautiful place where the wealthy live. I walked into his office. He greeted me and he kissed me. And there was this old man, one of the wealthiest men in the world. He walked out with short pants with holes in it. He had on boat shoes, them tennis shoes, with holes all through them. He had on a bush jacket that was all, you know, dirty. And he, he hugged me and smiled. I'm hugging Mr. Templeton of the Templeton Foundation, billions of dollars. And he comes and he takes me through his little office. Office was so small, I could hardly find a place to sit. And he talked to me. He gave a million dollars a year away, every year, to theologians. And I said to myself, if this was a Bahamian, snake leather shoes, alligator pants, tiger shirt. It's amazing that folks who ain't got nothing dressed like they got everything and they ain't got. They don't understand your life is not measured by the possessions. Let's talk about the kingdom in crisis. Let me just say this. Listen to me. I come to you from the Lord's word. Jesus said, write this down. Kingdom citizens are not immune from crisis. You know, we get this idea. Well, you know, I'm in the kingdom of God. You, know, you can touch me. Oh, yeah. 
I think the difference between being in a storm and being preserved in the storm. Here's the words of Jesus. He said, if any man hears these words of mine and puts them into what practice? That's the key. This is time now for you to put into practice the things of the kingdom. He says, if any man hears my words and put them into practice, look at the next statement. He says what? He's like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Now watch this. The rain comes down, the streams rose up, the winds blew and beat against that house, and yet it did not fall. Beat against that house. Beat against that house. Beat against that house. Because your house is built on the kingdom principles doesn't mean it ain't going to get beat up. That storm did not discriminate between houses. The only safety was what was the foundation. The same storm hit all the houses. Watch this. And it says it didn't fall because. There's a reason why. It had its foundation on the rock. Referring to the word of the kingdom of God. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not practice them. That's what this session is about. Time to apply. Does not practice them. He says, the storm comes. The rain comes down. The streams rise. And the winds blow and they beat against that house and it fell. With a big crash. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to announce to you that we are in a storm. Yes. It's not coming. And our only survival mechanism is the principles of the kingdom of God, the word of God. Yes. Now, I want to give you something, what I call, it's the keys. Jesus said these words, Matthew 16, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That means access. If I give you a key today to my house, what have I given you? Access. I've also given you what? Power. I've given you authority. I've given you control over my house. He said, I'm going to give you keys. Now notice the word is not key, singular, but keys, plural, which means that there are many different rooms you've got to attack. The kingdom of heaven is a country and there are many principles by which it works. And he said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom so that whatever you open on earth, heaven will have to open for you. Whatever you lock up on earth, heaven will lock up on you. In other words, I'm going to give you the authority to decide what happens on earth. We know what the economists are saying. We know what the governments are saying. We know what the reports are. Tourism is down 5%. Hotels are shutting down. Two-day work week. You know, losing your job, shutting down, banks downsizing, some collapsing. God says, okay, you better use some other keys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If the system on earth is not working, he says, you better have some keys to unlock the other country. Look at this one. Mark 4, verse 11. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to those outside. So I speak to them in mysteries, parables. He said, look, this is very important. He says, you're going to live in the world, but I'm going to give you some secrets. Okay, look at me a second. Uh, can you come here, Mark Quinn? Okay, Mark Quinn and I are standing on the same step. We're standing on the same level. We're in the same place. He said, look, I'm going to tell you secrets that I won't tell him. He's outside of the kingdom, even though we're in the same place. So you got information that he doesn't have. So when the crisis hit us, bam, we have different responses. Because I know something. But he doesn't. So he goes into depression and I start dancing. 
He goes into fear, and I start going into faith. Yes, sir. He said, I'm going to lose. I said, I'm going to be all right. Now, we're in the same place, same level, same position, but two responses differently. Why? Because information. Read the verse again. That's exactly what he's saying to us. He says, look, you are not like them, not because you are not with them. You're with them, but you are not like them. And the only difference between you and them is some information. Hmm. Secret of the kingdom of heaven. So what I want to leave you with today, and I'll continue this tomorrow, and I mean nothing tomorrow, next week. I have to, because we're going to have to get this right if you're going to make it. Thank you very much. He says, I'm going to give you the secrets of the kingdom, but not those outside. You remember uh, David says, David the, the king, David experiences, you know, David says, if you follow the righteousness of God, a thousand will fall at your right hand. Yes, Ten thousand will fall at your left hand, but it will not come near you. Now, he doesn't mean that, notice that it falls at your right and left. Look how close it falls. You're going to be in it. He said, but the way it's going to affect you will be different because of your position in the kingdom. Say hallelujah. Some of you are going to get called in this week. And you're going to have to have a different mentality. Or you'll go into depression. And that's why God sent you here today to position you so that a thousand could fall at your right. And a thousand could fall at your left. But your positioning and your dispositioning in the kingdom will let it not affect you. crisis here's a key I want to leave you with today and I will continue this next week I have to I'm under instructions this key is the most important key I call it the principal key of the kingdom the principal kingdom key given to mankind by the king of heaven write it down is this key. It's the key that's going to save you for the next 12 months. They, I read, I bought a copy of the Telegraph with me from London, which is the major newspaper that deals with economies and economics. They said that this crisis will last for five years. And we might begin to come out of it in five years. Don't say, well, it can be better. Listen to, you know, Minister Tourism. No, no, no. Listen, we're going to get hit. Ladies and gentlemen, if the dollar fell, do, do, listen to me, let me back up a minute, because some of you need to hear this from the Bahamas. When the American tourism figures fell last month, the Ministry of Tourism said, let's go to Europe. I just came from Europe five hours ago. The pound has fallen already to 150, which means they already say in England, we ain't traveling. So what kind of plan you got? What kind of plan you got? You plan on people who can't come? I'm talking to y'all. Hope is empty if it doesn't have faith. Faith is the substance. Well, we hope things change. That ain't enough. You need faith somewhere in there. You need someone to believe something different. Faith and hope got to be mixed. We hope things turn around. You heard that? The number one kingdom key that I want to give you today is management. It's God's number one key. Say management. Say it again. Say it loud. Do you know that is why we are in trouble? Mismanagement through greed. You are going to make it if you understand the message. Management. The first principle God gave Adam was management. Let me give you a couple of things to remember. Number one, 
the main assignment given to mankind is dominion over earth's resources not over people remember birds fish cattle plants animals then God told Adam the gold is good the resin is good the onyx is good he said every fruit is, is there for you to eat he gave him resources he said dominate the resources the word dominion is the responsibility to manage earth's resources that's what God created you to do to manage earth's resources and the divine goal of God for all of us is to extend his culture to earth which is a culture of plenty but he says you must do it through management management of earth's resources is God's first command have dominion over the earth's resources that's management he gave us responsibility to manage the products of this planet I put it to you friends I don't know how we're gonna make it if we go to heaven right now because can you imagine it says that the streets are paved with gold can you see them behaving teeth in God's pieces of rock of the streets we'll be all over the ground you got your piece I got my piece breaking up God's road why because somehow we relate wealth to this stuff God put on the ground In heaven, they'll be stealing gates. Pearls, pearls, brother, grab that, put on your back. See the behemoths walking them pearls gates. God said, where you going? I'm coming right back. <laughs> the stuff we go after, God uses for building material. <laughs> you know, I don't believe that there are streets with gold in heaven. And I don't believe that there are gates. Because the Bible doesn't talk about any buildings. I think what John was trying to communicate is the place is so filled with wealth. The whole atmosphere is so wealthy that the stuff we crave, God throws on the ground. And he said, pray that that comes to earth. Not the stuff, the atmosphere, the environment, where there's plenty for everybody. The only way you're going to survive if you understand this divine strategy of God. Management through work. I want to define work for you. The word work is the word ergon and it means to become. God wants you to use resources in the earth to add value to yourself. Not to hurt other people. The more valuable you become the more resources are attracted to you. I want to share this with you this morning because I believe that the heart of surviving this crisis will be how you manage. How you manage. Genesis 24. Everybody read. Go. Verse 4. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. Why? Because the Lord had not sent rain on the earth. Why? Because there was no man to manage the ground. Okay, listen to me. This is very important. The earth was filled with life, but it was barren. The verse says, God held back the rain. He refused to let anything grow. Please hear me. He refused to let anything progress. He allowed no growth, no development, no expansion. Why? He was looking for a manager. God could prosper you right now, but he's holding back. Prayer is not what God's looking for. Singing is not what he's looking for. Shouting ain't what he's looking for. Praying, no. He's looking whether you can manage what he wants to give you. Can you imagine that? Blessing depends on your capacity to manage. Here's some thoughts you want to write down. This word work actually means management. In the Hebrew, it blew my mind. It says God didn't allow anything to grow.
because there was no manager to manage the earth. Let me just announce something to you that you probably never thought of then. The reason why God created man. Can I say it again? The motivation, the reason why God created man on earth. The reason, the motivation, the need God had that made him create a human on earth was not to worship. He didn't need a worshiper. Heaven full of that. He needed a manager. Tough. So here's some results. Please write these down. Number one, management is the primary goal of mankind. And number two, whatever you fail to manage, you will lose. I'm going to say this again, my heart. Whatever you fail to manage, you will lose. If you fail to manage your body, you will lose your health. If you fail to manage your marriage, you will lose your spouse. If you fail to manage your money, you will lose all of your money. If you fail to manage the house you live in, you will rent again. God doesn't allow any growth until he sees management. Number three is so dangerous. God's primary measure of trusting you is management. He will only trust you with what you can manage. Number four is probably the most depressing. And that is God will give only to effective management. If he sees a manager who's managing effectively, he will give you more stuff. Number five is the one that every person in here who wants to succeed must note. Management attracts resources. Say it. Say it loud. Management attracts resources. Say it again. Management attracts. Let me say something to you. I'm going to make an announcement now to the whole world. Everyone watching television? Here's the announcement. They say that there's no money. I have an announcement to make. Not one cent left the planet. All the money that was here is still on earth. Now the Bible says God knows where the secret riches of darkness lie. The money on earth, it is attracted to management. <laughs> the money still here? Money runs from mismanagement. That's why the whole thing collapsed. The greedy CEOs gave loans people couldn't afford because they wanted high commission and God said, if I kill the whole thing, boom, and the money ran, no one knew where it had gone. Now they're printing money and the money ain't got no value. Listen, if, 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 if you're going to make it through the crisis, you better start managing your bedroom. Clean the floor. Let God see your closet neat. Did you make your bed before you left, young man? That's management. Whatever you fail to manage, God will take from you. The rain won't come anymore. You have a barren desert. There's no time to waste no money and waste no, no materials. You better start managing that paycheck. You got a choice between food and shoes. Forget the shoes. Wear them old shoes another three months. Why? You got to manage that money. We, we, oh Lord. Let me tell you what we want. We want God to wake magic rather than management. Here's the worst one I'll give you for the morning. God will never give you what you ask for, but only what you can manage. Yes, sir. 
That's why your prayer ain't answered. Oh God, I want a million dollars. God says, you can't even pay tithes from a hundred. <laughs> you can't manage 10% of a hundred dollars. And you want a million. Let me just let you write it this way. I call it management and prayer. God will give you what you, not what you pray for, but what you can manage. You pray for God to give you a job. God says, okay. The last job you was on, you went to work late every day. You took two hour lunches every day, stole the man time. You got off five minutes to five instead of 5.30. And you lied, say you were sick and you wasn't sick. How can I give you another job? praying for God. Oh God, I need a house. God says, you don't keep the one you're living in clean. And you're renting that one. You pray for God. Oh God, I need a car. God says, you don't clean the bicycle. In other words, you ain't managing what you have now. How can I give you a bigger thing to mismanage? God, I want a spouse. He said, you don't even pray by yourself. I won't talk about praying with a spouse. Don't get quiet on me now. You see, he will give to management. We love to pray. God says, no. I withhold rain until I see management. Let me give you a word you never probably thought about. Everyone write this word down, especially the mothers and fathers. This word, economy. That's a big word. You hear it all the time. People don't understand what the word means. I thought I'd simplify it for you. And when I was in college and we studied economics, I was shocked to find that economics simply means to maximize the minimum. That's what it means. When you, when you reduce it to its lowest definition. To economize means you take the little and make the most of it. So if you want to be an economist, you take one apple and you make it a tree. And then it produces apples, which you sell. And then you make more apples from the seeds in the apples that came from the tree. So you got a paycheck of 500 bucks. God says, okay, turn this into 5,000. Oh, you got to be kidding, God. I'm going to eat me some grease. You go straight to checkers, buy some food. Nom. Go buy some shoes you don't need. Nom. Go buy some clothes. Some da -da -da -da. God says, wait a minute. It didn't multiply. You consumed, consumer, you consumed it on your own lust. So God takes away the job. Bam. You remember God gave three people some talents. Talents means money. The first one took the five, make it ten. Second one took, take the four, make it eight. The next one take the one and just buried it. Consumed it. Hide it. He came and took it from the one, gave it to the one who had the most. Why? Because he wants more. He don't want less. That's economy. It's a good time to go through your closet and find them clothing that you ain't worn for a long time and start investing them. Give them away. It's a good time. To find some shoes you ain't wore for a long time. Say, God, I ain't buying no more shoes for the next 12 months. I'm going to wear these shoes. I'm going to put these back in action. Why? I'm going to get the most out of these. No matter what they say about my shoes. I'm going to walk in my shoes. I'm going to get God to help me. I am going to attract resources. Give God a praise. I say shout. See my wife taking notes. Take notes twice on that one. No, she's a, she's a good woman. She doesn't waste money. She lives with me. We don't waste money. I know where all my money is. Carefully invested. <sighs> to economize means to get the most out of the least. Is that what you're doing? To economize means that you add value to your gift. You were born with a gift. You got to add value to it. Make it more valuable. 
To economize means God will only answer prayer if you regulate it with management. Answered prayer is regulated by your capacity to manage. God says, okay, you're praying for your business to expand. Uh, let's see how you're doing with what you have already. If you're going to make it through the crisis, now remember, the resources are still on earth. And God knows where it is. But he won't let it come to you if you can't manage. And remember, whatever you mismanage, you will lose. And so this is why a lot of people are going to be under stress. Because in good times, they didn't manage. Selah. Write this last statement down. God does not encourage waste. Do you remember when there were 5,000 people who were hungry? And Jesus decided, I'm going to feed them. And he did a wonderful miracle. He had them all sit down in order, of course, got to be organized. And then he break the fish and the bread and everybody ate. Okay, we like that part of the story. We forget the most important part of the story at the end. He says, now you go and pick up every crumb and bring them to me. In other words, I don't waste. Some of you are going to go to a buffet after this service. And you need to remember this sermon. You need to decide what you're going to do with your resources. In the next few months, your money will become less because the value is falling. That means whatever you spend it on got to be something you need, not something you want. I'm going to say to you people here who are married, especially those of you who, you know, got dreams to do things. Listen, don't put pressure on one another. If you can't afford something now, don't do it. As a matter of fact, if you could afford it, don't do it. Not now. You need to manage a little tighter. See? God hates waste. Here's a verse I think you never saw before. Psalm 115. <laughs> May the Lord be blessed. The make of heaven and earth be blessed. Verse 16 of Psalm 115. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he gave who? To churn of men. Everybody say delegation. Write it down. Delegation. Earth is your legal territory, and man was given dominion over earth as a legal resource. Now remember, God didn't give you ownership. He gave you rulership. And never confuse rulership with ownership. And if someone gives you rulership over something, but not ownership over something, then your title is manager. And so I put it to you this way. What is a manager? This is the most important definition you'll ever write down. I studied this in college, you know, but I had to improve on the, on the definition because I got it from the Bible. Management is, please write it down, everyone. Every banker, write it down. Every investor, write this down. Everyone who owns a business, write this down. This is it. This is what you always wanted to know. Management is the effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another person's property or resources for the purpose for which they were delegated with a view to producing the expected added value as management. I repeat this for those listening to the CD. Please play it seven times. Management is the effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another person's property and the resources they give you for the purpose for which they delegated it to you with a view to producing expected added value. That's management. In other words, management is never over your own property. You don't own the earth. You don't own the job you go into. You don't own the business you claim you have. It can be gone in, in, in one day. We are all managers. Every human being is a manager. God made us managers. And when we mismanage, we lose. God takes it from you. You keep coming to work late, you lose your job. 
You keep eating fat, 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 you start having heart problems. Whatever you mismanage, you start losing. You don't cultivate your friendships and keep feeding those friendships, they, they die. If you don't keep on putting affection in your marriage and respect, your marriage dies. Whatever you don't manage properly, you lose. And so management protects. If we're going to make it through the crisis, we've got to become effective managers. Let me uh, close here. We can pick up on this. The word effective. Management is what? Effective use. That means you use it for the original purpose. The second word is efficient. Management means that you must apply the resources in the most beneficial way. <laughs> you got $10. God says one of them is mine. You start debating with God. God said, look, I tell you to give me one of the ten. That's management. You want to steal my one and buy toothpaste. He says, that's not the most beneficial use of the one. That one guarantees you'll get the 90 tomorrow and the next day and the next day. It's like a farmer who got a, who got a handful of seeds. That's all he has. And he decides to boil them and eat them. He said, that's not good management. You don't eat a tithe. That's your seed. Number three, correct use. How are you using God's resources? Correct use means that you use it for the proper purpose and use. Management means that you don't take the man's copier and make personal copies. Oh, he won't miss this paper clip. Yes, God sees it. He writes it down in your book. You stole the paper clip, man. That, it wasn't given to use for your private use. That's the man's property. And I know some of you think this ain't a big deal. Listen, the Bible says God knows the hair on your head. So he knows the paper clip in your pocket. And, and it's, it's not the paper clip that's important. It's the fact that you do it without even feeling conscience. You can graduate from paperclip to typewriter to computer to laptop to desktop. Carry it on. That's why the principle is more important than the paperclip. Bad management. Correct use. The other word in management is timely. Management means you, use, you, know, you timely use the material. Listen, right now, it ain't a good time to do certain things. You want to you wanna renovate the house? This ain't a good time to spend money on renovation right now. Live where you live right now. Hold it tight. This ain't a good time for you to go on vacation trip to Hawaii right now. I know you had plans. Cancel it. The time ain't good no more. See, management has to do with timing as well. I wanted to buy a car this year. I know. But right now, the economy say the timing ain't right. And God, I need some wise people. The timing is off. So withdraw. Pull back. Reorganize. Trying to build your house. God says, yeah, but right now, just hold back. The timing is off. To everything there is a season, to every purpose, there's a time. Management has to do with timing. You got to know when to do things. And sometimes God will tell you, right now the environment ain't right. I'm come to tell you now, you got to time your resources management. The final word here is discipline. Management means that you have to discipline yourself with all the above. You got to be able to be effective, efficient, correct, and timely with your resources, and God will trust you with more. Whatever you mismanage, you will lose. And this is the season of folks going to be losing stuff. And mismanagement is the number one reason why people are poor. 
Another word for management is the word diligence. Everybody say diligence. That's the word for management. Diligent. Diligent means that you are effective, efficient, correct, and timely. It's management. One of my favorite statements in my house to my wife and my kids is this. You can never be early if you leave home late. Some of you can't even manage coming to church at 9.30. It's bad management. You know if you leave home 9.30, you, can, you cannot be here 9.30. It's management problems. I submit to you this much. The word management begins with the word man. It's the age of man being in charge. Management. Management is your responsibility, God says. Man, man was given rulership but not ownership. You're a manager. And all humans are managers. And that means that in the kingdom of God, no one owns anything. And that also then requires accountability. You've got to have to give an account to God of what you do with his money, his time, his gifts, his talents, his resources, the house he got you, the, the apartment you're renting, the car you're using. None of that is yours. Don't ever say you own it. Remember the rich man in the Bible? Jesus says, the rich man says, Oh, I am rich. My hands have made me rich. My hard work has made me rich. And the guy was bragging. And Jesus said, and he said, I will now build big barns. And I will, I will build bigger houses. And, and the Bible says, that night, God killed him. Don't ever claim ownership of his stuff. And if, he don't, if you don't own it, you're the manager. And if you're the manager, accountability is natural. That means you've got to give account. Here's the bottom line. Effective management determines the amount of your resources. I think the Bahamas, you know, if I was in government, which hopefully maybe one day I may go and get involved, I don't know. But if I was in government, you know, there were about 10 or 8 years ago, we were riding high. We had revenues coming in. You know what we should have done? We should have, we should have purchased some beautiful combines and some beautiful agricultural effective machinery and take a half an andres and begin to invest the tourist dollars into agriculture so we don't be strapped by one basket. Amen. We call it diversity. We're not diverse. So we mismanage, and now the resources is limited. <laughs> you know, I'm amazed. They say, okay, we can help you pay your light bill. How can they do that when they ain't got no money? The money comes from you. They mortgage in your children's retirement benefits in NIB. NIB money being used to finance our mismanagement. And that's what America is complaining right now. Do you know, in England, the last story I read on the aircraft was this. It says that, that the, the, the British government is about to use the retirement benefits of the workers to bail out the banks. What does that mean? That means you can grow old with nothing. Our economy is about a billion dollars. And by the time you take I and I B and finance everything else, what are we gonna do? Whatever you mismanage, you lose. A couple of verses to remember. The word mis the word management means what? Diligence, eh? Proverbs thirteen twenty two says, A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That's the part you like. But here's the next statement. But the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. I'm getting ready to go now. This is so heavy. Okay, look at the first statement. A what? Good man leaves what? An inheritance to who? 
his great grandchildren. All right, listen to this carefully. It says a good man saves up. Are you saving? Do you have a savings account? I mean, we're about to hit a crisis. If you lose your job, do you have money in the bank to sustain you for three or four months? That's what, it's, that's what he's talking about. A good man, a good woman always thinks about saving. You can't save without managing. The temptation to spend must be disciplined by diligence. I will not spend this money. I will not go to Miami. I don't care about the cisterns going. I ain't going with them. I got to save. But you went. Now you got the suit and no money. See, he says a good man saves in the long term. Here's another verse that you probably don't remember. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. That means if you don't walk uprightly, he withholds. But that ain't the point I want to close on. This last part. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. <laughs> 20 years ago, the Lord slapped me. Bam! I said, oh, God. He said, turn the other cheek. I said, yes, Lord. Bam! Slapped me twice. And I never recovered. I'm sensible now. He says, look, don't you ever quote again, son. The wealth of the wicked, live for the righteous, as if that's a good thing to quote. You should be ashamed of yourself, he says. The wicked has your wealth. God knows they have it. God is the one who told you they have it. How did they get your money? He gave it to them. Why did God give it to them? Because he gives resources to those who manage. Go ahead and clap. Get it out. See? That money that belongs to you, that's in the hands of the wicked, will not come to you while you stand there saying, money cometh. It ain't cometh. I bind. You can't bind that. I lose. You can't lose that. In the name, in the name of who? That's why you've been praying for the last 10 years and can't get that money. But it doesn't come to prayer. It comes to management. Clap, clap, clap. Listen, that's when I became serious about management in my personal life. I tell our staff, turn the lights off. You come at the bottom, turn the lights off. Uh, don't waste no paper. Use paper that's been used already. And they, 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 they may think, listen, we will lose this ministry if we don't manage. God doesn't give to saints. He gives to managers. Even if they're wicked. And that's why you work for them. That's why you are the borrower and not the lender. Manage your business, son. Don't do what you can't afford right now. Cut back on what you need to. No matter how you're tempted, just to come. And make sure you tithe and give offerings. God said, look, if you don't manage, the wicked will take your money. Yes. I never quoted that scripture again with joy. It's not something to be joyful over. Stop claiming that wealth. I claim it. You can't claim that. You have to attract that back to you. Yes. Proverbs 10, 4. Read out loud. Come on, loud. Everybody go. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent 
hands. That management brings wealth. Well, just comes to it when you are a manager. Folding up your clothes in a drawer, God watches it. Having a drawer for everything in your house is management. You see how orderly God is? Everything in order. Everything is that's management. If I come to you, matter of fact, let me go home with you right now. Can, you, can I go with you right now and see your house? Let me come right now. Let's go. After the service, I'm coming to your house. If we go to your house, I want to see your whole house. <laughs> Look at them praying back there. Jesus, Lord, I rebuke pastor in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Be that far from you, oh pastor. <laughs> One house at a time, right? Yeah. God watches the details. He watches the details. Because if you are mismanagement of your bedroom, you're going to mismanage God's house. Diligent hands. Here's another one. Proverbs 12, 21. Everybody read, go. Out loud. The lazy man, come on, read loud. The lazy man does not roast his game, but the diligent manager prizes his position. you handle what you have the bedroom the money the time the relationships do you prize them managers prize the little things pick up every crumb he says bring the baskets to me I want to count why I'm accountable to my father in heaven I just use his fish and bread Proverbs 13 4 everybody read go the sluggard, come on loud, the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent manager are fully satisfied. Proverbs 21 verse 5, read. The plans of the diligent manager leads to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. If you meet someone who wants something for nothing, you are in bad company. If you need money, you should never ask someone for money. You should ask them, what can I do for you to earn some money? That's the question you should ask. Stop looking for a handout. Stop looking for a hand up. Let them help you. That's diligence. It's abuse to take a man's money that he earns with his own sweat and blood and it costs you nothing. What can I do to earn $20 from you? That's the question you ask. Not give me. Can you, can you, can you throw me something? That's abuse. That's lazy. That's slugging. You can always be poor. When you respect the person by asking them, what can you do to earn it? You are managing the relationship. The plans of the diligent leads to profit. Boy, now is the time you got to profit. 
be good managers. I know I want to close, but I got to read this verse. Read this. Luke 16. And Jesus told his disciples this. There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possession. I'm reading the Bible here. So he called him in and asked, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. End quote. Jesus. Listen. God fires people. Read it. Now God is too good. He fires people. He's a loving God. He fires people. He says, you mismanaged. You are out of here. I love you. Go find another job. So don't be thinking God is coming a happy-go-lucky, you know, just wasteful. God says, look, I gave you my stuff. You mismanaged it. You're fired. It's in the Bible. What is this I hear about you, he says. And some of y'all are probably there. That's why God sent this message. You're about to enter a crisis. To be free, so I'll cherish every moment and every day. For your love has lit my path in everywhere. In the tender touch of your hand, I find the strength to rise and stand. Through every trial, every tear we've shed Your love's been the shelter where I find my bed For your love's been my anchor in life's stormy seas A beacon of hope guiding me to be free So I'll cherish every moment God is saying, you know, you're going to feel what you wasted now. And I want you to be wise. Today is a day of repentance. Change your thinking. Read the next verse. Everybody read. The master, come on out loud. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd or wiser in dealing with their own resources than are the people of light. Words of Jesus. That's why they got the resources. Read on. I tell you. Come on, read it. I tell you. Use worldly wealth, that means make friends with the wealthy people, to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone, you will be welcome into eternal dwellings. He says, look, get to know the people who got the money and find out what's their secret. And the secret is management. You know, I was reading this the other day, and the Lord said to me, he says, he says make friends with wealthy people. That's what he says. Do you know why? If you broke and I broke, we's bad company. Clap. And poor people like be with poor people. And that's why they poor. If you can be friendly, find someone who could help you up. Come on, give God a glorified praise. He says, make friends with the wealth, he says. So that when you are with them, you will learn from them. You want your friends to be people who you could call and get help from. i never forget this word. In that song written by, yeah, I can Chris quit here, Jesse Dixon. He says, that's the only line I remember. I'm by Richard, I know you remember this line. That old song Jesse Dixon was saying, he's saying, uh, my, son, my friend came to me and asked me for help. I said to my friend, I'm looking for help myself. <laughs> that one line stuck with me. If your friend need help, he's F. <laughs> and you need help yourself. That's a bad friend. Tell your neighbor, hope you got something. Don't tell your neighbor, I hope you got something to sit somewhere else. Come on, tell him. I hope you got something or go sit some. Jesus said, look, make friends with the wealthy <laughs> so you can learn how they got it. Don't be cheap.
jealous of rich people? Make them your friends. You want to know what they do. And the answer is simple. They're managing. Notice he said, it's a management story. He says, they, you mismanage, and so the world got it, he says. You are my children of light, and you are broke. Because the children of the world knows how to manage the resources. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.